There is something seriously wrong with how we grow plants in containers. I'm sure that you heard that plants like a highly nutritious organic planting mix, that lots of compost and organic material is crucial, and I'm telling you that that's not true. And in fact, it's actually the worst thing you can grow your plants in. What plants really want to grow in is the opposite of that. They want to grow in dirt. Look at a forest. The big trees are all growing in sand, silt, clay, and decomposed granite. I've been growing some trees now for four years in the same containers, and I can tell you Container gardening is not hard. It's actually very easy if you use a mineral-based soil. Before we get started, I'm Lucas. I grow hundreds of plants in pots, and I'm here to teach you how to grow pot as well. Oh, I mean, in pots. You hear all kinds of things about how hard gardening is. That plants don't like too much water, that they like to dry out in between, that a sign of a good gardener is measured by the amount of plants he's killed before figuring out how to grow them. But none of these rules apply when you're using a mineral-based soil. You can water as much as you want and not have any adverse results. You know, the plants are actually gonna love it. So why is organic material in your soil bad? It really comes down to one thing. Once that soil gets wet, it'll eventually rot and that'll cause your plants to get root rot. The soil will go anaerobic, and in anaerobic conditions, the roots can't breathe. That's pretty much it. Now we know organic material feeds plants in nature. You know, the leaves fall, and they'll fall on the floor, and then the decomposers will come in and eat them all up and poop out whatever's left. So that's what the plants will get their nutrition from. All the bugs and bacteria and nature will decompose it, and the mycorrhiza in the soil will bring it into the roots and it becomes a symbiotic relationship with nature. The roots don't want to live inside that material. They want to live in sand, silt, and clay. But that material, as it breaks down, is brought into their system and that's how they use it to grow. The roots are not able to suck out the nutrition or mine it out of the decomposing matter. So in a mineral-based soil, as you're watering it, you're not going to get issues of rot as quickly as an organic potting mix. But it's still possible if your soil is submerged in a bog or something like that, and your roots never dry out. You still need them to dry out eventually. This is not to say it's impossible to grow an organic potting mix. People do it all the time. But let me ask if this sounds familiar. Are you limiting your watering because you're scared that of overwatering your plants? Are you checking your soil if it's dry before you're watering? And do your plants turn yellow in the winter? Do you get chlorosis? Because I don't worry about those things at all. I water every day, sometimes multiple times a day. I even water every day during the winter and none of my plants turn yellow from overwatering. I don't have that chlorosis look to my plants. I do get leaf drop when the trees go dormant, but everything is generally still green during the winter. All right, so I didn't make this up. I learned this from Gary Matsuoka. He runs the Laguna Hills Nursery, and he has this soil called tapat. His father also ran a nursery, and back in those days, they used a very different kind of potting soil for their plants. It's basically sand uh, or dirt, but they didn't have these giant containers like what we have now. I'm growing an avocado in a 25 gallon container. That would be hundreds of pounds in, if we used his soil. He said that back then they used to sell plants not much larger than a one gallon. To lighten up these mixtures, they started adding certain barks and then that eventually led to other organic materials like wood. And here we are today. And Gary didn't learn this himself. You know, it's an observation that he has had, but there was a NASA scientist whose task was to find a growing medium for space. And he had come up with the idea of just using pumice because he was on vacation in Hawaii looking at everything growing in volcanic rock. But he explained to Gary that everything is backwards in the industry. Plants grow in minerals, not in wood. <laughs> but let's look at it even further. Let's look into bonsai. Bonsai uses three main components. It's akadama, which is baked clay, pumice, and they use some kind of volcanic rock and other sand, minerals, those type of things. The general mix that they recommend is one-third akadama, one-third pumice, and one-third lava rock. There's no organic component to it. I think there is an addition of bark at some point. You know, some people like to use that. But the general rule is the same. It's, it's just a bunch of minerals. I've seen mention of this academic paper where the professor had said that the issue with amending a hole is that the roots will circle around in that soil with the amendments, all the organic material, because it likes it too much in there. It doesn't want to spread out too far because there's no nutrition. It just wants to circle around in that organic material that's been put in the hole. And if you've been growing trees long enough, you know that they don't think in that kind of way. They just grow. Like if there's water and there's fertilizer around it, it's just gonna keep growing. And if it grows from its roots, it's gonna grow up from the top. What is really happening is that the roots don't like that area. So they're not growing and it's gonna have to battle its way out of the organic material to grow into the native soil around it, and then it'll start to thrive. I've heard stories of avocados being maybe 20 years old, 
and then they've been overwatered at one point and they just die. And I attribute that mostly to Phytophthora, you know, root rot caused from the organic material in the roots. My avocado plants never get dry. The soil is never dry. And this is kind of more of an issue with us here. I've done some traveling in Asia and looking into the pots of just random plants or random trees or even just planters, they're using mineral-based soils. You know, in the airport in Hong Kong, I just saw just leka, just pure clay balls. And just some random planter in the mall in Japan, it's just like sand. I saw a big pot in Kyoto, and the soil looks like just pure pumice. So it seems like they do know how plants grow in containers in Asia. It's just kind of something that we do more in the Western world. So there's many examples out there, but the most important one is my backyard. <laughs> I'm growing a bunch of trees in containers long term, we're approaching four and a half years now of these avocados, and they're all grown in Gary's top pot. So other ones, I got citrus, I have lychee, I have longans, I have yangmei, mulberries, blueberries, jujubes. What else is hard? Guava. Guava's not hard. I just want to stress that it's not hard. It's actually very easy. You have it in the right soil, and just make sure they're properly watered and fertilized, and you have no issues growing these plants. So what's the problem with mineral-based soils? Why can't you just use sand? Because it's too heavy. It's impractical to grow something in just pure sand, especially if you're on a patio or something, or on a balcony, it's, you have to consider weight. You also want to consider pH. Some plants, you want a lower pH, like blueberries, and that's typically solved with peat moss. Gary's Mix has a third peat moss, and I have no problems growing anything in it. And I've never measured pH, so. So this is what I consider perfect potting soil, right? This is a twig, we don't want that. No organic material put that in earlier. But what we're looking for are certain things. We need minerals to support the root system and for structure. So with that, we have pumice, we have sand. If we can't just use perlite because perlite is too soft and fragile, it'll fall apart eventually. It does uh, eventually turn to dust pretty much. This is very good for aeration early on and for weight reduction. If you're not concerned too much about weight, you can just go with pumice instead of perlite. So other things you can use, volcanic rock, pumice, sand, pea gravel, just like porous type rocks or really fine grain type sand. Decomposed granite is also a great one. These are all good for the structure of the plants. The next one is more water retention. And for that, we use peat moss. Peat moss is controversial about its sourcing. And if you look into it further enough, there's arguments for both ways. I lean on it being more sustainable than most people think. But your other options are coconut core, which doesn't last as long. I don't personally use coconut core myself because I'm just happy with my peat moss. But I've heard that it can decompose faster because peat moss lasts quite a bit longer than coconut core. Another option that's not too available here is rice holes. So used very extensively in Asia because they eat all this rice and all this rice comes from there. But it's very light and it lasts a long time and it can retain water too. So those are all good properties. That one's more silica-based too. So those water retention materials also double up as weight-saving materials along with perlite. So these are all have to be managed in a way that makes sense for the plant you're growing. Because sometimes if you're in a windy area, maybe you want your potting mix to be a bit heavier. You know, typically I don't, even though I'm in a windy area because I don't want to move around giant pots. I have many plants in 15 gallons and I have some in 25 gallon. And I have some in 25 gallon that need to go to 45. And I definitely don't want to deal with too heavy material in my pots for that. So what is Top Pot? Top Pot is made of peat moss, perlite, pumice, sand, and charcoal. It looks like this. The charcoal is what Gary attributes to the material that holds nutrients. I recommend using about a third peat moss, a third pumice, and the rest sand, perlite, and charcoal can be mixed in a way where if you want a heavier mix, then you add more sand. If you want a lighter mix, you add more perlite. The charcoal, Gary uses 5%. I use just a couple scoops. I don't think it really makes or breaks the soil mixture. The important part is that you just don't have any organic material in there that breaks down quickly. So if you wanna make an indoor mix, too much peat moss will retain too much water. So what I've been using is actually just 80% pumice and 20% peat moss. I have an indoor grown Suriname cherry. It's doing very well, it's a seedling. I'm trying to fruit it indoors. I would be okay if it tastes sour and has that diesel taste that's typical of the Suriname cherries. And maybe that'd be a good name for the variety you want to fruits. Sour diesel is kind of catchy. It's kind of this edgy name. I get asked from time to time on how I make my soil. So here's how I do it. This is a sifter I made because some of the peat moss you buy has wood chips in it. If you're using Sunshine Mix number three, then you don't need to deal with this. But with the Premier, sometimes you get some wood in there. So I like to sift it out. It's 
the premiere. You can just use bricks to elevate it. If you're dealing with a lot of dust and perlite, you definitely want to wear a respirator to protect your lungs. You can get in there with your hands, but I like to use the rake. After sifting, this is what we're left with. You can see some wood chips, some of the thicker peat moss, which is fine, but this is the type of things we're trying to remove. If you want to skip this phase, there's really no issue. It's not enough to do any damage. Next, we want to equal part of pumice. So I have some small pumice and some bigger pumice left over. And I'm going to add both into it just because I need to use it up. The remaining is a mix of perlite, sand, and charcoal. Yeah, typically more sand is better, but if you want a lighter mix, then you want to add more perlite. Sand is about 5%. I usually just do like one or two. There's not too crazy of a benefit to have a lot of it. All right, it's about done. One part peat moss, one part pumice. You can just use small pumice, but I have some extra big pumice. And the other part is perlite, sand, and charcoal. I just did one scoop of charcoal because to me it's not that big of a deal. I like to use something stiff to mix it up. I also just pick up the whole tarp and roll it over. That seems to mix up whatever's on the bottom pretty well. All right. It's looking pretty well mixed. Pretty happy with how it is now. Pretty straightforward. Only thing I really care about is having no organic material in there. Now I just get it scooped out into my soil bag. So with the mineral-based soil, you'll have a long-term container mix where your plant can live for many years. You're free to water as much as you want, and if you never want to hand water again, make sure you watch my video on drip irrigation next.